Okay, back to the boring panel again. I'm sure you're all bored of it by now, but uh, let me just show you a few things I've added into it today. Um, these buttons on the bottom, which are just my macro buttons, um, they can fire off from a macro loop. They can fire off a macro which is written in the 20,000 range of buttons. So, just for example, if I press button one, it'll be firing um, macros, say 20,000. And what it's doing, it reports that the macro is running with the light. And I've got the macro just delaying for three seconds, but printing that button one's been pressed. Let me just uh, clear what I've got on the screen. And I'll show you that. So, <clears throat> if I press the button, it tells me button one has been pressed. And while it's on, while the macro is actually running, I've just got it delay in three seconds, it'll keep the light on. So as soon as the macro finishes, the light goes off. Um, so it's the same with all the buttons. They're just on while the macro is running and off when it's finished. So just for instance, if I use this one for a probing cycle, while the probing cycle is running, the light will be on. When the probing cycle finishes, the light will go off. Same as if it was used for a tool change, press the light on and it will stay on until the uh, thing is finished. The other thing I've been playing around with is timers. Um, at the moment I've got the, let's have a look, the X, Y, Z and A select buttons for my MPG. Now my MPG on the machine is just up here, up to the left. So. I'm actually using the original one, which is right next to the MPG button. So it's just off to the left. So that's actually in the machine. Um, so I can toggle it to switch it on or switch it off. So it's, if it's being used or not. Um, I also thought, well, I need to zero the axis out. and I don't really want to use up four of these buttons. So I added a timer circuit or I'm taking a timer from, I start off with the Arduino. And I was taking the time from that, but after about two hours, um, the timer rolls over and I didn't know how to reset the code there to to uh, make it re-recognize the new time. So I went into system timer and used, I'm actually using um, ticks, which are the smallest amount of time. And then it's like 25 million ticks to, uh, to two and a half seconds. So that's quite a big time space. So anyway, what I've got there, if I press, let me just show you on the screen. If I press the X button, X select, it'll select X on the screen. Y, Z, and A. But if I keep, um, let's have a look, open it up a little bit. If I keep X pressed for three seconds, you will then reset the x-axis if you look the y-axis one two three and it resets so it zeroes out the axis if I hold that button for three seconds one two three and the z should go one two three and the a should go it tells me on the screen that they've been zeroed to check them and the buttons uh, all work as standard the other thing I've done is I've locked out the macros. So you can't have two instances of a macro running. And also you can't have um, two macros run at the same time. So if I press this button, the next one will not work until that one's finished. All right, so I can't have two macros running until the one's finished, then the next one will run. So I've blocked that out. Yeah, that, that seemed like a good feature because I'm going to probably use one of these to eject the tool. And obviously, I don't want to eject the tool if, for instance, it's probing or um, a tool changes in cycle, that sort of thing. So, once the button's pressed, that's running the macro, stops the macro. So, I think uh, the panel is definitely ready to go in now. Everything else is working.